Now we're going to turn our attention from solving rational equations to solving equations with radicals. And to do that, we're going to need the power property. So here it is. And it's a little bit abstract, but just follow along with me. And then when we use it, it'll make more sense to you. The power property says, if P and Q are algebraic expressions, then every solution of the equation P equals Q is also a solution of the equation p to the n equals q to the n for any positive integer n. So in other words, we can find solutions to equations with radicals and other powers by raising both sides to the same power to eliminate the radical. So just imagine if p and q were both radical expressions and we square both sides of the equation, then that's going to get rid of the radical. And this is telling us that anything that was a solution of the original equation will also be a solution of the new equation that won't have any radicals. But we have to be careful because the power property does not promise us that these two equations are exactly the same. It only says that each solution of the original equation will also be a solution of the new equation. But the bad news is that the new equation may very well have solutions that are not solutions for the original equation. In other words, the process of squaring both sides of the equation can introduce false solutions, or what we sometimes call extraneous solutions. So the bottom line is, when you use the power property to square both sides of an equation, that can introduce false solutions. So radical equations can give you false solutions, and you must check all solutions that you get from using that power property. You are frequently going to find that at least one of your solutions will not check in the original equation, and any solution that doesn't check in the original has to be thrown out. If none of the solutions check in the original equation, then that equation just has no solution. So here are the steps involved in solving an equation that has radicals. Step one needs to be isolate the radical on one side of the equation. You must make sure that the radical is by itself on one side of the equal mark before you do anything to both sides. After the radical is isolated, then you're going to raise each side of the equation to a power that's the same as the index of your radical. So if you have square root radicals, you're going to square both sides. If you have third root radicals, you're going to cube both sides. In this section, almost all the problems we're going to do involve square roots. So we will usually be squaring both sides. If your problem started out with more than one radical, then squaring both sides is only going to eliminate one radical. So if the equation still contains a radical, then you are going to repeat steps one and two. Then when you've gotten rid of all the radicals, then you can solve the resulting equation, and then you can check each of your solutions in the original equation. So isolate the radical, raise both sides to the same power, Keep doing that until you've gotten rid of all the radicals. Then you can solve, then you can check in the original equation. And remember, checking your solutions here is a necessary part of the solving process. It's not something we do at the end just to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. It is a required part of the solving process, so you must show that when you show your work on your quizzes and on your tests. Here is an example for us to get started with. Here we have x minus the square root of 15 minus 2x equals 0. So we see that this is a radical equation, and we know that in order to eliminate the radical, we'll need to square both sides. But before we do that, we need to isolate this radical. So I'm going to add that radical to both sides, and that's just going to move it to the right side and make it positive. Now we can square both sides, and this is the power property at work. So when we square the left side, we get x squared. When we square the right side, the radical and the power cancel each other out, and we just get 15 minus 2x. Now this is a quadratic equation, so the best way to approach it is to get all the terms on one side of the equal mark 
and see if we can solve by factoring. So I'm going to move the 2x to the left side and the 15 to the left side, and that's going to give us x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Now, this is a trinomial, and it does look like one that we can factor. This is going to factor into two binomials. So x squared is going to become x times x, and last times last makes minus 15. So the minus tells me that the signs here need to be different, and the 15 tells me that I need to use 5 times 3, and I need to put the 5 with the plus sign so that outer plus inner will add up to positive 2x. Now we're going to use the zero factor property. If this times this equals zero, one of these has to be zero. Either x plus 5 would have to equal zero or x minus 3 would have to equal zero. If x plus 5 equals zero, then x equals negative 5. If x minus 3 equals zero, then x would have to be 3. Now remember, these are only potential solutions. In order to verify that they are actually solutions, we'll have to plug each one of them into the original equation. Because remember, squaring both sides can introduce the possibility of false solutions. So we'll have to check the negative 5 and then we'll check the 3. If I plug in negative 5, I get negative 5 minus the square root of 15 minus 2 times negative 5 equals 0. Okay, now under the radical, negative 2 times negative 5 makes positive 10. So now under the radical, I have 15 plus 10, which of course is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And so now I have something that says negative 5 minus 5 equals 0. That was the right side of the equation. And that is not true. So negative 5 actually does not check as a solution. Let's try the 3. Now listen, I would love to be able to tell you that if the first one fails, the second one is guaranteed to work. That is not the case. It is usually the case in our textbook, but it's not always the case. And so you really do have to check both solutions. They might both fail or they might both work. We have already seen that the negative 5 failed, so let's go ahead and check the 3. So that's going to give us 3 minus the square root of 15 minus 2 times 3 equals 0. Now 2 times 3 is 6, so now we have under the radical 15 minus 6, and of course that's 9. So now we have 3 minus the square root of 9 equals 0. The square root of 9 is 3, so now we have 3 minus 3 equals 0, and that is true. So 3 is a good solution, but negative 5 is not. So our final solution for this equation is just x equals 3. Here is another radical equation for us to solve together. We've got square root of 3x plus 7 equals 3x plus 5. Now, of course, we have the radical that we have to get rid of, so we're going to use that power property to get rid of this radical. Notice that the radical is already isolated on the left side of the equal mark. It's already by itself. So we can just square both sides of the equation in order to eliminate that radical. Of course, when we square a radical, it basically removes the radical, and all we have on the left side is 3x plus 7. Now on the right side, you'll recognize that this is a binomial. And when we square a binomial, we have to use the FOIL method. Now, if you don't want to write down 3x plus 5 times itself and go through the whole FOIL process, there is a shortcut for squaring a binomial. You may have seen it. If you took beginning algebra with us online, you have seen this shortcut. If you don't already know this shortcut, it's a really good one to learn. So I would very strongly encourage you to learn how to square a binomial without writing it down and going through all the FOIL steps. So here it is. To square a binomial, we do the first term times itself. So 3x times 3x is going to be 9x squared. Then notice that if you had this written down times itself, the outer and the inner would both be the same. They would both be 15x. So to get that middle term, what we're going to do is multiply the first times the last. That gives us 15x. And then because there are two of them, we double it. So 15x plus 15x is 30x. Now, again, we double it because what's really going on is that FOIL process, and we're going to have both outer and inner 
equal to 15x. So that's where the 30x came from. And then last times last is going to be 5 times 5, so that's going to be plus 25. And that's how you square a binomial without writing it down and going through all the steps. So one more time, 3x times itself gives us 9x squared. Outer and inner will both be 15x, and we get that by saying 3x times 5. So 3x times 5 is 15x, and then you add that to itself. 15x plus 15x is 30x, and then last times last is 5 times 5, so that's 25. Okay, now you can see that what we have here is a quadratic equation, and so we hope to solve this using the zero factor property. So we're going to need to have a zero on one side of the equal mark. Let's subtract 3x from both sides of the equation, and let's also subtract 7 from both sides. That's going to leave us a 0 on the left. On the right, it's going to leave us 9x squared plus 27x, because 30x minus 3x, of course, is 27x, plus 18, because 25 minus 7 is going to be 18. Okay, now you know that we want to solve this by factoring, but make sure that before you start factoring that you always check for a GCF because if you can factor out a GCF, it makes your work a lot easier. And here I notice that 9 will go into each of these coefficients. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a GCF of 9. And to get the inside of the parentheses, I would say 9 times x squared makes that first term. 9 times 3x makes that second term, and 9 times 2 makes that last term. So now all I have to worry about is factoring this little baby trinomial here. And I hope you can appreciate how much easier this will be than if we tried to factor this trinomial with the larger numbers. It's always easier when the GCF is already factored out. So now we're going to try to break this trinomial down into two binomials. Notice I did not lose my 9. You need to keep the GCF there. Okay, first times first is x squared, so that means I need x times x here. The last term is positive, and so that tells me the signs in my binomials will be the same, and they'll both be positive, so put the plus signs there. And then last times last made a 2, so that's 1 times 2. All right, now double check that outer plus inner adds up to positive 3x, and it does. So this factoring is correct for this trinomial. Now we can use the zero factor property, and we say if this times this times this is zero, one of these factors has to be zero. It's not the 9 because the 9 does not contain a variable, but either x plus 1 equals zero or x plus 2 equals zero. If x plus 1 equals zero, then x equals negative 1, and if x plus 2 equals zero, then x equals negative 2. Now remember at this point, these are just potential solutions. So in order to verify that they are correct, we have to plug them into the original equation and see if they work. Remember, they could both fail or they could both work, or one could work and the other could not work. We won't know until we test them both. So I'm going to start by checking the negative 1. So that's going to be square root of 3 times negative 1 plus 7 equals 3 times negative 1 plus 5. Under the radical, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. So I have square root of 4 on the left side. On the right side, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So we have negative 3 plus 5. And we know that adds up to positive 2. So now square root of 4 is 2, and the right side adds up to 2. So this is true. And the negative 1 has checked out as a true solution. Let's see what happens with the negative 2. So we'll have square root of 3 times negative 2 plus 7 equals 3 times negative 2 plus 5. Okay, 3 times negative 2 is going to be negative 6, and negative 6 plus 7 is going to be positive 1. So under the radical, we have positive 1. On the right side, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and then negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So now this says square root of 1 equals negative 1, and that is not true because the square root of 1 is positive 1. So this would say that 1 equals negative 1. That's false. So the negative 2 did not check as a solution. And we will just say that the solution to this equation is x equals negative 1. Here is another equation that I'm going to work with you. 
Here we have square root of 2x minus x plus 4 equals 0. Now remember the way to eliminate the radical is to square both sides. But I can't do that until the radical is isolated on one side of the equal mark. So these two terms here need to be moved to the right side of the equal mark. So I'm going to add x to both sides and I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. That's going to give us square root of 2x equals x minus 4. Now to eliminate the radical we will square both sides. You already know that when we square a radical expression we're basically just removing the radical. So the left side is going to be 2x. On the right side we will have to use the FOIL method to multiply this out and I'm going to use our shortcut. So first times first is going to be x squared. The middle term is going to be minus 4x minus 4x. So that's going to be a total of minus 8x. And the way I knew that was x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And then there are two of those. So when I add them together, I get negative 8x. Then last times last is negative 4 times negative 4. That's going to be positive 16. Of course, this is a quadratic equation. So the best thing to do is try to solve it by the zero factor properties. So we will want a zero here. So we're going to want to say minus 2x on both sides. That's going to give us zero equals x squared minus 10x plus 16. So now we want to factor this and get our two potential solutions. So this is a trinomial. It's going to factor into two binomials. x squared is going to factor into x times x. The signs are going to need to be the same and they're both going to need to be minus. And then last times last is 16. So our choices are either 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. And I'm going to choose 2 times 8 so I can get the middle term that I need. Okay, now verify that outer plus inner would add up to negative 10x, and that works fine. So now, if this times this is 0, one of these has to be 0. So either x minus 8 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. If x minus 8 equals 0, then x equals 8. And if x minus 2 equals 0, then x equals 2. So these are our two potential solutions. I must check them both. So let's plug the 8 back into the original equation, and that's going to give us square root of 2 times 8 minus 8 plus 4 equals 0. Now under the radical, 2 times 8 is 16. So we have square root of 16 minus 8 plus 4 equals 0. Now the square root of 16 is 4. So we have 4 minus 8 plus 4 equals 0. And that's true because 4 minus 8 is negative 4, and then negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so that works great. And now let's check our positive 2. So we'll go back to the original equation and put in our 2. Square root of 2 times 2 minus 2 plus 4 equals 0. Okay, under the radical, 2 times 2 is 4. So we have square root of 4 minus 2 plus 4 equals 0. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so we have 2 minus 2 plus 4 equals 0. And of course, that's not true. 2 minus 2 is 0, and then 0 plus 4 is 4. So that's going to be false. So we discard that solution, and we'll say that x equals just 8, and that's our only solution. Now there are two giant mistakes that people make when they're solving radical equations, and one of them is that people try to start solving before they get the radical isolated. So you must remember to isolate the radical before you square both sides. And also remember that terms cannot be squared individually. Remember the FOIL method. When you want to multiply a binomial times itself, you can't just square the first term and square the second term. You have to use that FOIL method or the shortcut that I showed you. Another place that people lose points on radical equations is that they either forget to check their solutions in the original equation or they check mentally and don't show it when they show their work. So I really want to encourage you, remember to always show that you checked all the solutions in the original equation. Now I know when we solved linear equations and quadratic equations and even rational equations, you usually do not have to show the checking as part of the solving process. That's because 
on those types of equations, if you check, you're just checking your work to make sure there are no mistakes. The checking here is different. The checking on radical equations is part of the solving process. You cannot get to the right answer unless you go through that checking process. So it's a necessary part of the solution and you must show it when you show your work to get full credit. Here is another practice problem that I'm going to go through with you. I would encourage you to pause the video and try this one by yourself. I think by now we've done enough examples where you can try one on your own. And after you've done that, then I'll go through it with you. So now I'm going to go through the solution with you. So remember that we need to start by isolating the radical. So we'll need to add 9 to both sides of this equation. And that's going to give us square root of 6x plus 7 on the left. And on the right, negative 7 plus 9 is 2. So that's going to give us x plus 2 for the right side. Now to eliminate the radical, we square both sides of the equation. On the left side, squaring the radical expression eliminates the radical, and we just have 6x plus 7. On the right side, we have to use the FOIL method, or our shortcut, to multiply x plus 2 times itself. So the right side is going to be x times x, which is x squared, plus 2x plus 2x, so that's a total of 4x, and then plus 2 times 2, which is plus 4. And now we can see that the equation we got is quadratic. So we'll want to try to solve this by the zero factor property, and that means we're going to need a zero over here. So I'm going to say minus 6x on both sides and minus 7 on both sides. That's going to give us zero on the left. And on the right, it's going to give us x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now we will factor this trinomial into two binomials. First times first is x squared. The signs need to be different, and the middle term needs to add up to negative 2x. So I'm going to go ahead and put down my minus and my plus. 3 times 1 is 3, so I'm going to put the 3 here with the minus sign and the 1 here. And that way I can get outer plus inner to add up to negative 2x. So since that does work, I'm now sure that this factoring is correct. And I can say if this times this equals 0, one of the factors has to be 0. If x minus 3 equals 0, then x equals 3. And if x plus 1 equals 0, then x equals negative 1. And remember, these are just potential solutions. I must check them both in the original equation. So checking the 3, I would have square root of 6 times 3 plus 7 minus 9 equals 3 minus 7. So over here under the radical, 6 times 3 is 18, and 18 plus 7 is going to be 25. So I have square root of 25 minus 9. Then on the right side, 3 minus 7 is going to be negative 4. Okay, now back over here, square root of 25 is 5. So now I have 5 minus 9 equals negative 4, and we know that's true. So we can say that 3 is a good solution. Now let's check negative 1. So plugging the negative 1 into the original equation, I have square root of 6 times negative 1 plus 7 minus 9 equals negative 1 minus 7. So now under the radical, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, and negative 6 plus 7 is positive 1. Then I have minus 9. On the right side, negative 1 minus 7 is going to be negative 8. Okay, now back over here, square root of 1 is 1. So I have 1 minus 9, which does add up to negative 8. And then on the right side, we already had negative 8. So this solution also checks. And for the first time, we're going to have two solutions to a radical equation. So I'm going to say that the solutions to this equation are 3 and negative 1. So now this doesn't happen very often that they both check. And whenever this happens, if I were you, I would go back and double check my work and make sure that they're both supposed to work. In this case, they both really do work. But that's why I've been telling you all along, you have to check them both. You can't assume that if one of them fails that the other will work, and you can't assume that if one of them works that the other will fail.